Okay, we're going to resume with lesson 11 so we can read, see that we can re read and display data now in our Angular client by calling our node API. So we now are going to deal with the functionality, implement functionality, being able to add a new artist. So we will go back to our server API here. And we're going to write a post method. But here we're going to use the exact same URL. So in our express, in our original node tunes, we had API slash artist slash create as the post URL. Here it's the same URL for get, but obviously different method. So when we're calling get, we're fetching. When we're calling post, we are creating. Post, again, at the root path, our request response callback. So again, our code sort of similar to before, except we're just dealing with JSON. So we're going to call artist.create. And we just are going to pass in our request body. And we will get back either an error or an artist. If there is some error, we will log it. And we'll again send it an error response as JSON. Again, we'll use 400 for bad request. Otherwise, we'll just send back the new artist data and we'll use a status code of 201, which means new resource created. Try to create new artist and return either 400 bad request or 201 new resource created. So there's our post method. And now we'll need two add artist methods in our Angular client, one in the service that actually invokes our API method here, and one in their component that invokes the service method. So we'll go to our client. We're going to write an add artist method that will make a post request to our same endpoint, but it's going to pass in a JSON object that has at least an artist name. I'll go back to my client. We're going to go to our service. Now we need to add our other reference here. In order to make to send data, like we can make an empty request here, a GET request this way, but we actually need to pass a JSON object when we're doing a post. So we're also going to include the HTTP headers here. So we're going to instantiate, whoops, sorry, this is 
So I think we have to call it up here outside the class. Create HTTP header so we can send JSON objects as part of our HTTP requests for post, put, and delete. And then we're going to append on the content type. So we're specifying that any data we send in our HTTP headers is in JSON format. So we're going to create an add artist method here. So we're going to pass in an artist object. Now we haven't defined that, so we will want to do that in our service. Sorry, we'll define it in our component. So we're calling the exact same URL. But now we are going to pass in our artist object. as well as we need to pass in those HTTP headers. Um, okay. If we can, oh, we just say any here. Okay, so this is going to take an artist object in. It's going to make a post request to the same URL, but it's passing in that artist as a JSON object. And we're also defining our content type as JSON. So now we need to set up our component to call the add method in the service. And then we want to wire up our save button to call the add method of our component. So go back here. And we need to define a couple other properties here. Um, for the moment, we just need a name property as a string. I may have to also say string or undefined. And now I'll create an add artist method. So we're going to fill the, create an artist object, populate the name. And then in our service, we'll call add artist, pass in our artist object. And again, we'll subscribe to the response. We'll get an artist object back if it works. 
And then if we get a response back, we want to refresh the list. So then we just call this dot get artists. So we're going to requery the database after we add the new artist. So we will create and populate new artist object. Call the service and pass the new object to be saved. Okay, so I've added a name property here. And then we've got our add artist method from lines 28 to 39. And then we want a click we need to wire up our form. We need to bind our text box to the name property of the component using ng model. We can have that two-way data binding that we had last week. And then when the user clicks the save button, we're gonna populate the name from our text box, create an object, a new artist object, and then pass it to our service. So now in our component, on our input, we're gonna use ng model and bind it to the name property of our component. And then we'll add a click handler here that's gonna call our add artist method. Okay, so our text box is bound to the name attribute. Our button will now be bound to the add artist method of our component, which will read the text box input, create an object, call our service and pass it the object. Our service posts it to the API. And then when this is all done, we wanna call our get method again to requery. So if this all works, our page, the data on our page should just update without any refreshing. We'll try it. Um, okay, can't bind to ng model. Alrighty. Um, hmm. Interesting. Why did we get this? Event is not assignable to type string. Ah. In order for us to use these directives here, we're missing something. We're now working with, so ng model is part of the Angular forms library. We haven't imported that library. So in app.module.ts, we are going to need to import the forms module and add it to our list of imports. So without declaring it and importing it, we can't use ng model. We'll see what that does. Okay, so now my error goes away. Let me do this. Okay, so now I'm going to try to add an artist and see if our page reloads. So you can put in any artist that you like. And it automatically got added to my list. So it saves, it refreshes, 
The one other thing we should probably do is once we save, we should be clearing out the form. So we could set our name attribute back to an empty string or undefined. And that would then automatically reset our form. So we can write a simple method for that as well. So in our artist component, let's write a clear form method. Say this dot name. We set it to undefined. And then after we fresh the list, we'll clear the form. So now I can um, refresh and my form should clear. So I'll go and try adding something else. Now, Bob Dylan should get added to my list here, but my form should clear as well because we've, we've got that two-way data binding. Our input is bound to the name property. So as soon as we remove a value from the name property, our form clears. So now we can add, we can make our list as basically as long as we want. So we can add and we can refresh and notice our, our browser never even flickers. We don't have to refresh anything. Angular is always keeping this up to date. One thing I'm actually gonna try here just for fun, I'm just gonna open a new browser window. Um, I'm curious if we go to, um, I'm not exactly sure what will happen. If I add something in the database, whether my page will refresh or show that new data or not, I'm going to try it. could also use MongoDB Compass for this. I'm going to see. So here's my artist collection. Maybe a little difficult to see. Let's just see. Hmm. Can I add a document here? I think so. Okay. Yeah, I can insert a document. So if I just say name, name. Um, I'll put in something that should be near the top of my list. Band that starts with A or B. Okay, thanks, Jason. So I'm gonna put in the RKLs. I don't know if my app will refresh or not, but we'll see. Not automatically. Okay. So it's not constantly watching if I refresh. Yeah, now I get the RKLs. Okay, I was curious if it would, that would trigger a refresh on the front end, but it doesn't. So the data is stale. There may be something we can do about that. I'll have to look into that perhaps. Okay, so we've done a fair bit with this for today.
So um, I think we will call it a day for now. You still have assignment three to work on. Um, I will put everything that we've done up. And then what we'll want to do next week is implement the rest of the functionality here that we can then click on an artist, have it populate in our form, have the ability to delete or save an update. We can also clear. So we'll implement that update and delete functionality in next week's class. And then the week after we will look at securing our API with JWT. Right now the API is basically open. I mean, like anybody can just pull it up in the browser. No, there's no security on it. And then we'll also look at deploying. So how do we deploy these two apps and also look at, you know, setting the production environment domain. So we could set, we could deploy both of these two apps, for example, to Heroku and have them communicate that way. So that's what we'll do over the next couple of classes. Okay. Um, are there any questions?